In part two of gradient descent, we will get into the meat of the algorithm. Let's start by breaking this phrase down into the definition of its two terms, gradient and descent. A gradient is simply an incline, a slope. Descent means to move downward. So together, gradient descent means moving down a slope. And the slope we're moving down in machine learning is our loss curve. Remember, we start with a random initiation of our weight and need to move downward on our loss curve until we get to the lowest point. Gradient descent is the algorithm we use to move down the curve. Keep in mind, this curve is not known to us until we solve for the loss that corresponds to each weight. But we can't solve for every weight because there are an infinite number of weights that we could theoretically use. A common way gradient descent is explained is as a person hiking down a mountain in the fog. Consider that it is so foggy that they can only see right in front of them. They don't know where the bottom of the mountain is because they can't see the bottom, but they know which direction their next step should be. Gradient descent is the same. The algorithm can't tell you where the bottom is, but it can tell you which direction is down. So what we do is take many small steps in the downward direction until we reach the bottom of the curve. To do so, we need a little bit of calculus, but don't worry, you won't be solving anything by hand. When you implement this in code, there are already libraries written to handle this for us, but we should still understand what's going on. The thing you do need to understand is by using our loss function, we can take the partial derivative of the variable we are adjusting to find out how to adjust our weight. Don't panic if this sounds confusing, it's actually pretty simple. When we use the loss function to take the partial derivative of our variable, we are finding the slope of the tangent line. This red line is our tangent line. It is a line that touches the point at the curve. Again, taking the derivative gives us a slope of the line. This is the most foundational piece to machine learning, as it is how the model adjusts their weights to quote, learn. Notice in this example, the slope of the tangent line is moving downward. This means we have a negative slope. With negative slope, we need to increase our weight to get nearer to our optimal weight. If our current weight is over here, when we take the partial derivative of the variable, our slope is positive. This means we need to decrease our weight to get closer to the optimal weight. That is how we know which direction to move our weight. But there are two components to gradient descent. First is knowing which direction to move our weight, but second is how much to move our weight. So for example, this purple point represents our current weight. We know based on the slope of the tangent line that we need to increase our weight. However, if I increase my weight by a very small amount, it will move down this curve very slowly and take a long time to train. Conversely, if I have a very large step, I may overshoot the bottom of the curve, which could leave me in a perpetual state of bouncing from side to side, but never finding the bottom of the curve. The parameter which controls how large of a step we take is called the learning rate. Learning rate is denoted as alpha. This will show up in our gradient descent formula, so let's look at that now. This is the gradient descent formula, which updates our weights. Don't get nervous, this is pretty simple. On the left, we have theta j, which represents our new updated weight. Next, we have theta j again. This is our initial weight before it has been reassigned. Next is alpha, our learning rate. And finally, our partial derivative of the loss function, which is in essence our slope of that tangent line I talked about earlier. So we multiply our slope by our learning rate to control how big a step we take. Let's look at our example and walk through a weight update. We have our formula in the top left for reference. Remember, in simplest terms, we have our new weight equaling our current weight minus our learning rate times the slope of our tangent line. So if we plug in our numbers, we have our current weight at 205, our learning rate at 0.0001. This is a number we define ourselves and a slope of negative 34,000 based on the slope of the tangent line we see in red. So we can simplify this function and find our new weight is 208.4. Now we can move our weight and continue to do this iteratively over and over again until our loss flattens out. One important thing to note is that our step size is in some ways self-adjusting due to the slope of the tangent line. When we are far away from the minima, our slope is very steep. In this example, our slope is negative 34,000. After multiplying by our learning rate, this led to an update in our weight, which was an increase by 3.4. However, when we get closer to our minima, the tangent line gets closer to horizontal, and a horizontal line has a slope of zero. In this image, our slope is approaching that point. Let's say we now have a slope of negative 10. It's hard to tell this small a difference with the x and y axis scale being so different, 
but regardless, let's agree the slope of this near horizontal line is negative 10. When we multiply that by our learning rate, we now have a weight change of only 0.001. So whereas before our weight change was 3.4, our weight change now is only 0.001. That's a massive difference. So just as a little nugget of information, you should understand that as we move down the loss curve, despite the learning rate staying the same, your step size will still get smaller, which is a really great feature. So that is it for gradient descent. We just continue updating our weights, meaning taking steps down the curve until we reach the bottom of the curve. We know we have reached the bottom when our weight change equals zero or when our loss begins to increase, meaning we have gone past the bottom. Understanding gradient descent is a big milestone and is arguably the most important concept in all of machine learning.